According to the radio, we've crossed the Rhine at the Remagen. That would mean that the American First Army is less than 100 kilometers away. Huh? I think we've crossed the bridge at Remagen, sir. Oh, good. How are you feeling, son? Okay, sir. You lost some weight. Both of you have. And they've cut the bread rationing down to four ounces. Well, that's below subsistence level. They can't feed the prisoners. They've no business running a jail. Make an official protest to the commandant as from acting senior American officer. That's you. Right, sir. And listen, you're not just SAO for the few of us here. You represent the whole goddamn U.S. Army. I wish this to be put on record. I have received a telephone request from the office of the higher SS on police leadership in Leipzig. I intend to report this request in writing to the general officer commanding Army District 4 Dresden with a strong recommendation that it be taken as far as Berlin if necessary in order to gain support to refuse it. And the nature of this request, sir? That we prepare the so-called important prisoners, the prominente, for removal at 12 hours notice. I find it hardly surprising. With respect, sir. Do you not? There can be only one interpretation of this request. These men are to be used as hostages. In exchange for our own prominente, sir. In my view, there will be no such exchange. The prisoners in question are to be used as... as pawns to extract last-minute concessions from the Allies. Sir, with respect, I must that point out... That is totally contrary to the tradition of the German army. And a violation of the Geneva Convention regarding prisoners of war. Bern, Stockholm, Censor. Phil? Can you read this? Yeah. Left one. Let's get back. I am planning a trip to Mexico. Yeah. Mexico. It's nice planning. Uh, it's lovely. Just think of that, huh? The freedom. You know, it's funny. Freedom's what we're supposed to be fighting for, but if you're really crazy about someone, it's the last thing you want them to have. And he's not free. Oh, sure she is. Not for what's important. To be with you, for both of you to be together. What difference does it make where she is? Yeah. Anyhow, by the time her summer vacation starts, you'll be home. I'm not sure. The war is as good as over. Will they ever let us go? Alive. I get the feeling with some of these guys, they're really only keen on death. When our fortress was shot down, we were taken to a Luftwaffe field for interrogation. He was an ex-fighter pilot, spoke good English. Told me that every plane in his squadron had been shot down in the attack. Then he grinned and said, we may not know how to live, but we know wonderfully how to die. I reckon some of these guys are just so ready to die themselves, they just as soon take us with them as not. This is the BBC Home Service. Here is the news, and this is Frank Phillips reading. Bomber Command made a heavy attack on the Ruhr last night, and mines were laid in enemy waters. Twenty-one bombers are missing. Yes. No. Guns. Bloody well, his guns. One at a time. It's not all stampede.
guns. What? You can just hear them. American guns. See anything? No. Might if it was dark. How far is the horizon from up here? And to be strictly accurate, based on a five-foot man at sea level, it's 2.9 miles. From up here should be, ooh, 30 miles more. Well, Phipps, it's your people. Over the hills, but by no means far away. <laughs> All right, back to work. Well, we need this thing. Sir, I have just received this dossier from the Staatspolizeistelle Leipzig. Dossier. Long after the war's over, they'll still be sending their dossiers, I suppose. Sir, this dossier concerns the American Phipps. Mm -hmm. It takes note of the fact that he is the son of an American ambassador and suggests that he should no longer be treated as an ordinary prisoner but should be confined with the prominenti, sir. I wish they'd stop interfering with the administration of this camp. Oh, and I have my reply from the General Officer Commanding Army District 4. And he supports the stand you've taken? Supports it. Doubts he can do anything about it. So much for the commanding general. I'm going to inform the senior British officer. That will give him the chance, if he chooses, to request a visit from the protecting power Switzerland. With respect, sir. Hmm? In certain quarters, such a move might be regarded as an attempt to sabotage an order, sir. Of course. What time do you wish Colonel Preston to attend, sir? 1500. And Colonel Dodd also. Sir. Ready for black signals. Make us one. Make it one. You're on. You're faded. Yeah. Six. Six upon. But well, you know, I haven't heard any guns since we didn't have no breakfast. If we're being pushed back. Huh. Be the first time for Patton and Hodges if we were. Three. You know, this castle would make a perfect place for those artillery guys to zero in on. You know that? Why don't you go get a needle and thread and make us a nice big stars and stripes to hang on the outside wall? <laughs> Those guys will have this place marked out with big ze red zeros on the map. Come on, baby. Snake eyes. I don't there know. You go. I've seen bigger foul ups than that in the army. You yeah. kidding? No, I'm not kidding. We bombed our own front line in Normandy. Killed our own commanding infantry general. Seven. Good point. Hey, has uh, anybody got a needle and a thread? There exists in the increasingly complex and secret hierarchy of the Third Reich an organization which is part SS, part Gestapo, and part ordinary police, yet above all three. From its district headquarters in Leipzig, I have received a request. Not an order, you understand. Merely a request. It is to the effect that the prominent prisoners be made ready for transportation at 12 hours' notice. Transportation to where? No physical destination specified. Merely outward bound. If I understand that expression, yes. Will they be under Wehrmacht jurisdiction? There is a phrase which has crept into the sub-language of the Reich of this era. It is one of a great number of half-whispered terms. Nacht und Nebel. Darkness and fog. They will be under the jurisdiction of darkness and fog. What you say, Commandant, is horrifying and extremely outspoken. Well, our language used to be a structure expressive of truth. It has ceased to be so. It is time it began to be so again. And if I now seem to be indulging myself with truth, it is in the hope that you will take advantage of it. Is the motive behind this political? Without a doubt. So the time has come for the hostages to be used? That is my interpretation, and why I've summoned you here. In that case, Commandant, I give you notice that we shall resist the transfer of our fellow prisoners with all the resources at our disposal. And I ask now, formally, we would be granted an interview with the representative of the protecting power. I note your request. Thank you, Commandant. Oh, Major Carrington, there is one further point. I have been asked by this same authority to reclassify Lieutenant Phipps as a prominente. 
He may expect to be isolated to their quarters without further notice. I assume that's because he's an American ambassador's son. Yes. Commandant, don't you have the authority over the prisoners under your jurisdiction? My authority is intact. As you will find to your cost if you begin to question it. This is my girlfriend, Anne. Oh, yes? Anne the wit. Charming. Oh, you want to see my house? Oh, that's lovely. Just really outside heavenly. Philadelphia. Is that a swimming pool? Yeah, yeah. I got a better one here. Yeah, you can see the diving board. Good swimmer, are you? Oh, not bad. I do about 20 lengths every morning. Just run down in your dressing gown? Yeah, and then I do a few chin-ups. Tuck it off and leap it into the bathhouse. Got the bars, shower, have breakfast. I must say, I long to go to America. Ah, oh, you really must. Hey, Chris, don't forget. There's always a bed for you at our place. Cigarette? Come in. Simon, the SS are threatening to remove the Prominente prisoners away from Kolditz. That means out of Wehrmacht jurisdiction. Obviously, the time has come for the Nazi party to use their hostages. I want it made known, please. Oh, and the Colonel has the impression that the Commandant wants his position strengthened. What? Well, strengthen is against his, against his own superior officers. <laughs> well, how close are the Americans now? Anybody heard? Well, the sound of the guns are no closer than they were yesterday. If that's close. Get it's up to us in here, isn't it? I suppose we could raise a pretty good stink. Let's get the Prominente in here. Well, well, how are we going in? to do that? I mean, look, they've got a special guard. Still, now. we could get them in here at a cost. And then if yeah. Jerry tried to force his way in, we could bloody well threaten to burn the place well, down. Exactly. It's not going to help anyone very much. Look, I have no wish to appear callous. The fate of a handful of aristocrats is of very little interest to me at this time. If anybody wants me, I shall be... Uh... Upstairs. We could threaten the German commanders with reprisals if they go along with this move. <laughs> what we've got to organize is a really strong show of force. Right. I agree. What form should it take? Can you get together a plan? I mean, along those lines? Certainly. All right, give me something positive in a couple of hours. Right here. Anyway, it may not have to come to anything. Jerry's a bit of a bluffer, if you ask me. Usually backs down when there's a show of force. Mm, does he? I must say, I've never noticed it. But I think that's one of the silliest pieces of poppycock I've ever heard in all my life. <clears throat> Regarding the uh, prominente prisoners here in Kolditz, Herr Obersturm and Führer, is there are factors involved which I insist be taken into consideration. One is to do with the legality of such a move. Yes, yes, I most certainly do. And the others are on the level of expediency. The predictable reaction of the British prisoners here will render the administration of this camp almost impossible. The time for such measures is long past, as I'm sure you'll agree. Yes, I'm glad you feel that way. Oh? Since when? On the Führer's order, No, I have not had the honor. Thank you for that assurance, Herr Obersturm van Fuhrer. <laughs> Sounded quite sympathetic. Obergruppenführer Berger, the chief of police forces, has just been made head of all prisoners of war administration. He's to be in Leipzig tomorrow. I've never met him. Have you, Mayor? In Berlin. He's Himmler's deputy. Not an easy man. It still boils down to the two basic options. Either you have a mass demonstration, object of warning Jerry off, or you go for the coup. Either barricading them where they are now, or try to hide them somewhere. You can't do both. To pull off the coup will lead surprise and, to some extent, weapons. Yeah, well, surprise, yes. Excuse me, Herr Commandant. Obergruppenführer Berger has arrived unannounced. He's on his way to see you. Is Meyer Morn with him? On his way to greet him, sir. Hauptmann, you stay here. Yes, sir.
Apologies for arriving unannounced or burst. In any case, heartfelt greetings. Thank you, Mayor. Obergruppenführer, this is Hauptmann Ullmann in charge of security. Hauptmann? Sehr gerne. And air attack three times on the way. After the third one, Schankel here found it necessary to retire hastily into the bushes, eh, Schankel? Yes, here, Obergruppenführer. This is my aide, Hauptsturmführer Schankel. <laughs> well, he's nothing to be ashamed of. I've known men run away in the morning, afternoon go out and earn their Ritterkreuz, eh? <laughs> <laughs> what about my Prominente, Obert? Yes, sir. I want them ready for transportation at 600 hours tomorrow morning. I have received no orders to that effect from OKW. Without such an order, no prisoner may be moved. I just gave the order. <clears throat> we have always abided by the Geneva Convention here. You may and have. I damn well haven't. <laughs> Any sabotage by prisoners or staff, my SS will move in here and tear the place down. I have the Fuhrer's personal order concerning the Prominente in my pocket. It's a fine thing when a German officer has to bow down to the dictates of his own prisoners. I'm acting entirely at my own instance. I will not be able to answer the consequences here. You won't have to because you'll be shot. And I'll shoot three prisoners for every hour's delay after the 600 hours deadline. That's the way these days. Men and boys are dying out there in the fields to hold back the Russians. We can't be soft while that sort of thing is going on. You're a good man, Oberst. Done an excellent job in unrewarding circumstances and all that, but you're behind the time, you know. Herr Obergruppenführer, such remarks issued in the presence of subordinate officers leave me no choice but to hand in my resignation. <laughs> That's the old army talking. <laughs> well, there was a lot to be said for the old army, but God in heaven, man, you can't resign. Be like resigning in the front line. I can't do it, you can't do it, not at a time like this. Don't talk sabotage. Führer sees through all that. I tell you, I've had a few of his orders I would have preferred to disobey. You can't do it, though. He follows through. Hello, Berst. 600 hours or the SS will be in here. A battle weary. You can't blame them for being a bit rough. No excuses. I shoot three prisoners for every hour's delay. Two hours and you will be shot. Four hours delay, and I'll shoot myself. Now, give me one more schnapps, and I'll be on my way. Don't you worry about your prominente, Oberst. But don't fool around, either. The easy days are over. Oberst, I must impress upon you and your staff, don't let there be bloodshed. At a time like this, it's madness to waste unnecessary blood. Maybe transport for them, isn't that so, Shankar? At 600 hours, Herr Bogruppenführer, yes. A vehicle will be coming. Yes, well, there you are. There will be transportation for them at 600 hours, and they will be on it. I didn't hear what you said, Commandant. They will be on it, will they not? Yes, Herr Obergruppenführer. They will. Right, when we get the signal, the legs come off like this. And the pin stays in. Mm. If there's time, we'll hammer in a couple of nails for good luck. Well, this corridor here. If, on the other hand, the second plan is used, the same bars that we used across the back of the doorway here. This, of course, in effect, creates only a few moments delay. gets us nowhere. So, how far do you want to go when the chips are down? I mean, surely the whole point is to avoid using force by the threat of using force. Yeah, whether we go any further than that is up to the SPO. Hey. It's out of my hands. I'm afraid we have no choice but to bow to force majeure. The certain alternative is bloodshed. What will it be for the Prominente who will be SS hostages without protection? That's what was on your conscience yesterday, Commandant. What's changed it since? 
Gentlemen, there is such a thing as reality. If you had in your service an organization like the SS... The difference is we don't. That's why you might say we're at war. We have done all we can. If the SS are brought in here, all chance for all of us collapses for the Prominente, for you and for us. Your attitude is understandable, but there is no choice. Well, some of us think we not only have a choice, but a responsibility. Then I beg you, use your influence. Major Carrington, I must inform you that Lieutenant Phipps is now officially classified as a Prominente and will leave on the same transport with the others. Major Moan, I must inform you that if anything happens to Lieutenant Phipps, you better not be any place where I can get my hands on you. Because I'm holding you personally responsible for his life. And I take that as a direct threat to my own, in which case, under Section 14 of the Army, I'm a... That has nothing to do with, with Phipps! Please! Mayor, you will take this up with me at a later time. Sir! Colonel Preston, I beg you, go to your quarters and try to calm unnecessary passions. What you call unnecessary passions brought us here in the first place, Commandant. They're not going to be easily stilled. What do you say, Richard? Think we got it whacked? More or less. Everybody down. The SPO has called an emergency meeting. Well, I'm afraid he's going to have to meet without me. I'm busy. The Colonel wanted me to tell you that if they take you out of here, it'll be over his dead body. Well, uh, what the hell can he do about it? Is there anything he can do, Phil? I don't know. All right. Sir? Well, I think, gentlemen, will you go through him, please? Gentlemen! Thank you. Uh, sit down, gentlemen, please. As a result of a meeting which Major Carrington and I have reason to have with the Commandant, I think we face ourselves with a very grim situation. And I have to make a very painful decision. Before I tell you what it is, I think I'd better let you know what the Commandant has just told me. The first thing is going to affect us all from now on. And that is that a SS General has been placed in command of all prisoners in Germany. And that general has already been to Kolditz, and he has ordered the Commandant to transfer the Prominente prisoners away from here tomorrow morning. Any signs of resistance, and the SS will enter the castle. He has also told me, and I have no reason to doubt him, that the first victims of any SS action will be the Prominente, and then ourselves. Any demonstration will be met with instant and bloody reprisals. Therefore, gentlemen, painful as it may be, we no longer face a dilemma, because there is nothing that we can do which will affect what happens to the Prominente, except for the worst. Colonel's right. Phil. Most of you don't know that uh, Lieutenant Phipps is an American ambassador's son. Therefore, that makes him one of the Prominente, and he'll be shipped out with the rest of them at 0600 tomorrow morning. Jim, I had no idea. Nor me. What do you expect us to do, sir? Just let them come in here tomorrow morning and cart Jim off without raising a finger? With respect, sir, if we let Lieutenant Phipps and the Prominente go without doing anything, is there not the possibility that the Germans might just turn around and start on us? You will not. No one will take any action against the Germans whatsoever. I want that clearly understood, all right? Yes, sir. sir. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Honestly, I, I don't want any risk taken on my account. That tower. We'll need that for an observation post. I'm sorry, this is a prisoner of war camp and can be used for no other military purposes. Very well. I shall report your refusal. I sometimes think you Wehrmacht officers will do anything to lose the war. I'll convey that message to the Commandant. Do that. Obergruppenführer Berger had dinner in our mess last night, by the way. Told us you're having some trouble with your prisoners. We are having no trouble with the prisoners. Very well, we shall see. But if any of our men have to break in here, Herr Hauptmann, 
I personally advise you, stand well clear of the gate. What are you carrying? Good evening, Hauptmann Ullman. Good evening. What are you carrying? Now, this is some of Lieutenant Phipps's baggage. He's hurt his foot and he's supposed to report to the Prominente. The Prominente? Lieutenant Phipps has not been ordered to report anywhere. Not until after appell tomorrow morning. Yes, I know that, but uh, he didn't want to leave things until the last minute. He's a nervous traveler. One of the guards could take it in. I'd really rather take it in myself. After it's been inspected, naturally. And then? Hauptmann Ullman, something terrible is going to happen if I don't have a chance to talk to someone in that Prominente block. I have some news that might interest you. What is it? I know where they're going. Where? Off Lag Foray. At least the commandant there is a Wehrmacht officer. That is good news. There's only one thing wrong with it. What's wrong? How can we be sure? I've got an idea. What if you went with the Prominente? I can't go with them. But what if you did go with them? You could get a receipt signed by the Wehrmacht commandant, countersigned by one of the Prominente. At least that would give some measure of relief to the British. And to us, we could use it. I can't go. Even if it meant avoiding a bloodbath up here? I'm sure the Commandant would be at least interested in hearing the idea. I suppose I could ask him. You know, Hoppe Newman, we've grown to trust you. You know that. Hate to go against the Colonel, but it may have to come to that. It's rough on him, this, you know. It's rough on everybody, not just the Colonel. Nevertheless, I still think it's out of it. I ain't going to get some of the chaps down. Is there any other side of those guns anywhere? Yeah, it could be just the wind direction. Oh, don't be few times. There is no wind. And we did hear the guns' wind was easterly, which is the prevailing wind here, damn it. Been studying it for weeks. <laughs> principal failing occurred in the sailing. The bellman, perplexed and distressed, said he had hoped at least when the wind blew due east, the ship would not travel due west. I worked it out to talk to Ullman. He came up with some interesting news. He knows where they're going to send the Prominente. Where? Off like 4A. He says it's under Wehrmacht control. Whose word do we have for that? Ullman's. Well, I suggested to him to be on that transport tomorrow, get a receipt signed by the... Uh, Officer responsible, countersigned by one of the Prominente, and bring it back here to us. And you think the SS are going to let him do that? They might. It's a hope. Yes, it's a hope. You managed to talk to any of the Prominente? Yeah, I talked to one of them. What is that? They're very grateful for our concern. What else? Well, he said there's so few of us and so many of you. And that it's not the beginning of the war when men and ideals have to be proven. They've been proven, and the war's over. He said it's the uh, spring of 1945, and all that matters is that all of you see summer. So wish us well, watch us go, and God willing, we'll all meet again in England. What a position to be in. If only the first American army were going to move on, it would solve all this. I haven't heard any gunfire today, have you? No. All quiet on the Western Front. I remember that quiet all right. It's on the night of November the 10th to 11th, 1918. I was in the trenches, I was 
a subaltern, 19 years of age, and I'd lost nearly all my friends. Everyone in the trenches that night on both sides knew that the war was going to end the next morning at 11 o'clock. When dawn did come, it was a, a sort of autumn silence that went right the way through Belgium, through France, right up to Switzerland. And out of that stillness came long, unheard sounds. It was a creak of a cartwheel, a clank of a milk pail, and a French farmer sawing wood. Sounds that hadn't been heard near the front line for nearly four years. There wasn't a shell or a machine gun. It wasn't even a rifle shot. Just a French farmer sawing wood. And I thought that there would never be war again. That was what it was like in 1918. Yet some did die, even the next day. Just moments before it officially became ended. Wasn't that true? Yes, that was true. And this war is not over yet. There are dozens of places like that in this castle. Old as you, staircase bricked over, forgotten air shafts, even rooms. And what about that maniac Shaw? How did he's at it? Your absence won't be noticed till after a pill. Probably not for the prominentia packed and ready to leave. They're not going to keep them hanging all around all day waiting for you. If they tear the place apart? Not if they think it's an escape. And we've got to try and improvise something to make it look like one. Oh. It's a hell of a risk for you guys. Well, no more so than during the dozens of genuine escapes that have taken place. Yes, I agree. If all the prominentia disappeared overnight, there'd be a bit of issue muzzle. But not just one, the one who wasn't in the prominent block to start off with. Will it be clear that you're SBO? Better still be your SAO, Colonel Dodd. Keep it all American. Damn it, you're only going into hiding for a few days, after all. What are you lot up to? We're going to show Jim a little cubby hole where he can hide out for a few days till the Yanks get here. Oh, you are, are you? It'll look like an escape. An American affair, as I see it. Well, I'm not so sure about that. Will we have to clear it with the SBO? Well, if Colonel Preston gets to hear about it, I don't think he's going to like it. Bill. Mm -hmm. A couple of the chaps are thinking of hiding Phipps for a few days. We're going to hide Phipps. Well, that's up to you fellas if you want to chance it. Well, the Germans can't cause that much of a stink. I mean, if you can really make it look like an escape. How do you feel about it? Could be all right for me, but... Well, maybe not so hard for the rest of you guys. You'll just be taking a little private evasive action, that's all. You can't blame a fellow for that. I'll check this out with Colonel Dunn. Tell Colonel Preston what's going on. I'll keep my eye on him. I know there's a risk. Maybe it's a good idea. It's going to be rough on a lot of people, Colonel. Especially the British. Yeah. But look at it this way. If it wasn't for the British with their right accents and their class distinctions, there wouldn't be any VIP group, and young Phipps would be in the clear. And we wouldn't have to make these goddamn decisions. Phipps is an American. He's got nothing to do with all this stuff. That's not fair, Colonel. Phipps is an American ambassador's son. We've got privileged families in our country, too. He comes from one of them. It is a good idea. Hide him. Colonel Dodd's gone along with it. Well, I suppose I had to know this. You can answer that better than I can, Colonel. Yes, of course I did. I'm sure they'd cancel it if you didn't go along with it. Which puts the ultimate responsibility back on me. I didn't mean for it to come out that way. I was aiming to give you the choice without the responsibility. 
Well, there's no choice for me and Colitz. I understand as far as Phipps is concerned, you're in a worse position than I am. All right, let them try it. Before we go down to Appel, we melt you into very thin air. Yeah, yeah. But when they asked the questions, it was me who found the hiding place, and nobody knew of the plan except myself. Yeah? Okay? It didn't make you sleep any better. Fair enough. You're on, with the Colonel's blessings. Which you may find won't help you a great deal. Sorry, Padre. Colonel Preston? He went along with it. Colonel Dodd would have said if he thought it was a mistake, wouldn't he? Yes, of course he would. Look, uh, sleep on it. If you feel any different, let us know in the morning. hungry. Well, thank you, Mawson. Carry on. Sir. Huh? Fred Day's miss! Halt! Do not dismiss! Lieutenant Phipps, stand forward, please. Lieutenant Phipps, stand forward, please. Give it Take ten men and search the British quarters. Report to me here within five minutes whether you find them or not. I demand to know at once. Where's Lieutenant Phipps? I have no idea. This was found hanging over the outside wall, Herr Mayor. Lieutenant Phipps is hiding. I repeat, where is he? A senior American officer. I request that all inquiries about Lieutenant Phipps be directed to me. Very well. He will present himself on this spot no later than 0540. I have no way of implementing that order, Major. I regret that, Herr Carrington. Fred, attention! Well, gentlemen, unless Lieutenant Phipps is found within the next 20 minutes, or surrenders himself, the work of yesterday will have been in vain, destroyed. I fear there may even be loss of life. Present. Not yet. If Lieutenant Phipps is not found during the search now proceeding, which I'm quite sure he will not be, 
I beg you, go to your quarters and find him yourselves. I guarantee he will not be under surveillance while you do this. Excuse me, sir. I wonder if I might have a word with you, please. Certainly. Colonel Preston, Major Carrington, if you please. Mayor. If Lieutenant Phipps is not found, the SS will carry out a search of the castle in their own particular fashion. In addition, for every hour's delay beyond the scheduled time of their departure, they will take three hostages. If Lieutenant Phipps is not found by noon, hostages will be shot. down and stand and get shot. Unless, of course, they're bluffing. Do you think they're bluffing, Colonel? I don't think so either. Well, senior American officer, you're very much in the firing line, so whatever decision is made has to be mine. We give Phipps up. You're not taking that decision alone. I'm taking it with you. I want everybody to know it. Do you know where Phipps is hiding? No, but I'll find out. I'm going to talk to Colonel Dodd. Permission to talk to Colonel Dodd. Follow me. Watch the dead, sir. Where's Phipps? Sorry, it's a sellout, is it, sir? It is not certain that Phipps will be harmed. But it is certain that other people will be shot. Major Carrington has gone to talk to Colonel Dodd. When he comes back, I want you to take him to Phipps. Is that an order, sir? What do you think it sounds like? I don't believe it. They're too demoralized. It'll be their necks when the First Army gets here, and they know it. They're not bluffing. You think I'm going to hand over young Phipps to the SS? I swore over my dead body. Colonel! Colonel. They're going to take hostages. The Commandant says they're going to shoot three prisoners every hour. We haven't got any time. A lot of lives rest on minutes. God damn! All right. Go find young Phipps wherever he is and order him as for me to come out of hiding. And that's an order for you, too. Where the hell's my goddamn pants? You know, I'm going to regret this as long as I live. No, you won't. Yes, I will. Take this to 55 Brigadier Führer Schreck at his headquarters. Contact over Wolfram Führer. Okay. Jim, I want you to come up out of there and give yourself up. Yeah. Why? What's happened? They're taking hostages. They're going to shoot them. Yeah, but I already am a hostage. You don't understand. The Commandant says they're going to take three hostages every hour. They must be bluffing, Jim. Stay down there. You're going to have to do everything you can to kill me if you don't start taking orders. It's an order from Colonel Dodd, right? No, it isn't. It's an order from me. You bastard. You can take that order back, Major. I can't do that. You can, you know. Okay, Lieutenant. 
Consider that order rescinded. It's bad when friends force a friend to give an order. I'm sorry, Phil. What's the matter with you, lads? Run out of oxygen, halfway to the top. Gun flashes. I saw them. Distinctly. Well, they couldn't have been more than 30 miles away. I did see them. You can see the flashes on the horizon. About 30 miles away. Yeah. Oh, well. Colonel, good to see you up, sir. Son, I'm sorry. This prisoner is Lieutenant Phipps. Your list is now complete. Gentlemen of the Prominente Group, please get into the vehicle. Be seeing you soon. Major Carrington. Major Carrington. You are under arrest. You will be tried by court martial. On what charges? Insubordination, threatening the life of a German officer. A mandatory sentence upon conviction is death. That's a little steep, isn't it, Major? No doubt you are prepared to qualify what you said, and we will forget the whole thing. Maybe. What did you say? There could be another court-martial, Major. Take him away. <laughs> 